Bayek humbly lowered his head in the presence of Chung Myung, seeking a favor that could make him stronger. He expressed his willingness to do whatever Chung Myung asked in exchange for the strength, even indicating his readiness to learn from a junior like Chung Myung. However, Chung Myung was reluctant to grant Beck's request, deeming it too troublesome. He believed that individuals like Beck often acted recklessly and then expected others to clean up their messes. Despite Beck's persistence, Zhang Men refused to assist him. This rejection only fueled Beck's frustration, and he vented his frustration by taking it out on Chung Myung, who was perceived as weak and lacking swordsmanship skills. Surprisingly, Baek's actions seemed to bring him a sense of relief, as if he had been harboring this frustration for a decade. Baek's attack on Chung Myung was not intended to cause severe injury, and he felt satisfied that Chung Myung could still get up afterward. However, just as he was basking in this moment of catharsis, someone else suddenly appeared before him, sending a shiver down his spine. It was Yu, and her unexpected presence caught him off guard. Yu revealed that she had secretly witnessed Baek's beating of Chung Myung, prompting Baek to worry about her intentions. He anxiously asked if she intended to kill him, to which Chung Myung responded with a rather sinister inquiry. He wondered aloud where he should strike her to ensure that she would forget the entire incident. Yu, however, claimed to have already forgotten what had happened, and proposed a different deal. She requested that Chung Myung teach her the sword technique he had used, and despite her apparent amnesia, she seemed determined to learn it at any cost. Chung Myung couldn't help but feel intrigued by her determination, and asked her why she was so eager to acquire this particular skill. She avoided giving a direct answer, only expressing her strong desire to master the technique. Chung Myung couldn't help but suspect that there was more to use motivation than met the eye. He sensed that her interest in the sword technique had a deeper purpose. She also mentioned that this technique was no longer practiced within the Mount Hua sect, which piqued his curiosity further. As they conversed, Chung Myung plucked a plum blossom in front of Yu, showcasing his unique approach to the sword technique. She recognized that this was the technique she had dedicated countless hours to mastering, but it differed significantly from her own methods. She inquired if this was the legendary Moon Sword, and Chung Myung hinted that she had to meet certain standards before he would teach her further. Despite initially underestimating Yu, Chung Myung began to realize that she possessed a sharp intellect. He cautioned her not to share their encounter with anyone else, emphasizing the importance of secrecy. Before leaving, he instructed her to take care of Beck by moving him to his room to avoid any discomfort from his stiff neck. After Chung Myung departed, Yu found herself pondering her father and his connection to the Mount Hua sect. She vowed to learn the technique and eventually returned to the sect to seek forgiveness on her father's behalf. This resolution was rooted in the belief her father had instilled in her about the unparalleled value of the Mount Hua sect. Upon Chung Myung's return, he encountered Ji Ol and Yoon waiting for him. They explained that Senior Beck had mysteriously disappeared, and the Grand Senior had arrived at the White Plum Hall. Chung Myung shared that he had been with Beck earlier, setting the stage for a series of events that promised to unfold with intrigue and complexity. Despite his occasional lapses in judgment, Chung Myung reassured Ji Ol and Yoon that he hadn't crossed the line of senseless brutality. He emphasized that he hadn't merely beaten Senior Beck, he had utterly thrashed him in a fit of fury. This revelation left them taken aback, as it was an unprecedented level of disrespect toward a senior. However, Chung was quick to assure them that he had taken care of any potential repercussions stemming from his actions. Jiul expressed concern about the need for restraint and the importance of adhering to basic boundaries in human interactions. He informed them that Baek was currently unable to speak, leaving them bewildered by the extent of Chung Myung's dominance. The following morning, the senior members of the sect were conspicuously absent during their usual routine of tormenting the juniors. Jiul couldn't help but perceive this as a resolution to the conflict, suggesting that Chung Myung had indeed emerged victorious against Senior Baek. Meanwhile, Yoon believed that Chung Myung should take Senior Baek's place in opposing the Southern Edge sect, as he had proven himself to be stronger and had thoroughly defeated Baek. Jiul contemplated the revival of the Mount Hua sect and stressed the importance of the juniors not relying solely on Chung Myung but also striving to become stronger themselves. He speculated that Chung Myung might even become the figure who could transform the Mount Hua sect, potentially even taking on a role akin to a dictator to oversee the smaller Mount Hua sect. In the midst of these developments, Yu continued to follow Chung Myung, seeking to learn the Yue Maiden Sword from him. Meanwhile, Beck grappled with the absurdity of his situation. Despite the severity of his beating, he found himself without any visible external wounds. Determined to prove his worth, he harbored a resolve to redeem himself in the eyes of his peers. The day arrived when the Southern Edge sect was expected to make its appearance. Ungum had made all the necessary preparations and assured the sect leader that there would be no issues. The sect leader, grateful for the improvements in their circumstances, 
acknowledged Chung Myung's contributions. For him, these changes were not just about food and training grounds, but also about restoring the dignity of the Mount Hua sect. As they awaited the Southern Edge sect, Ungum reflected on the idea that they were not the only ones striving for improvement. He understood that the sect leader believed they were already perfect, but he recognized that humans were meant to continue their quest for self-improvement until the end of their days. As the sect leader of the Mount Hua sect contemplated their current situation, he acknowledged that had the sect not declined, he wouldn't have assumed his leadership role. He also mused about how his senior brother's departure from the sect had led him to a life of studying Taoist texts and scriptures. In contrast, Ungam expressed the belief that those who had left the sect had done so because they were not deserving of leadership. The sect leader's concern shifted to the second-class disciples and whether they would be able to prevail against the Southern Edge sect. Ungam reassured him, mentioning that even the third-class disciples were putting in tremendous effort. The sect leader emphasized that the Mount Hua sect's conference with the Southern Edge sect was essentially an exchange, where the outcome mattered less than who could use the experience to improve further. He reflected that the only substantial difference from the past was their possession of the seven Plum Blossom Sword Technique records. However, he acknowledged that restoring the former glory of the Mount Hua sect would be an exceedingly challenging task. Zhang Seohan, a second-class disciple of the Southern Edge sect, questioned whether the Mount Hua sect had ever been among the Ten Great Sects, given its current state. Jin Jumriong recalled the Mount Hua sect's historical significance and how they had developed the surrounding village extensively. Zhang expressed skepticism about their current location, considering it small and unimpressive. Lee Songbaek, however, harbored a different sentiment this time. He felt a growing desire for revenge against Chung Myung, contrasting his earlier lightheartedness. The sight of the Mount Hua sect reminded him of a past encounter with someone, igniting his determination. As they arrived at the Taoist Hall, the newcomers from the Southern Edge sect found it uninviting. Taoist halls were typically situated far from the mundane world to encourage self-reflection and solitude. Zhang lamented that the journey to reach this place was arduous, but they expected only basic accommodations, even inferior to those of the beggar sect. Concerned that the reputation of the Southern Edge sect might suffer due to their association with the Mount Hua sect, they resolved to remain cautious. Lee urged them not to lower their guard, but Zhang emphasized that even a slight relaxation of their vigilance would change nothing, as they were dealing with the Mount Hua sect. An elder from the Southern Edge sect then reminded them of their past conflict with the Yunha Merchant Guild, suggesting that they should not forget the consequences of letting their guard down. The newcomers from the Southern Edge sect had been deeply humiliated in the past due to their association with a martial arts sect on the verge of collapse. Their sect leader was particularly incensed by this, and Saima revealed that the sect leader was determined to sever all ties with the Mount Hua sect through this conference. Their goal extended beyond mere victory. They aimed to crush the spirit of the Mount Hua sect. Upon arriving at the Mount Hua sect, they were shocked to find that the gate was in good condition. They knew the Yuna Merchant Guild had invested in the Mount Hua sect, but it had not been long since these improvements had taken place. Sima commented that even though the main gate had been rebuilt, didn't change the fundamental nature of the sect. Yun Song, a member of the Mount Hua sect, welcomed them and introduced himself. Sima expressed his desire to meet the sect leader, suspecting that the interior of the sect might still be in poor condition. However, to his disappointment, the condition of the buildings appeared to be significantly better than he had expected. Sima contemplated the need for some sort of subterfuge. Just as Sima was considering their options, Chung Myung suddenly shouted at Hyun Song, telling him to just die. This outburst left Sima infuriated. Chung Myung attempted to feign innocence, suggesting that he hadn't directed his comment at Sima. Another disciple intervened, advising against quarreling with Chung Myung, as he was the one responsible for tarnishing the Southern Edge sect's reputation. Notably, this disciple lacked proper manners. Chung Myung responded by questioning the disciple's martial arts abilities, hinting at his previous defeat against Lee Songbek. He compared the disciple to his senior, implying that he shouldn't be giving orders. Chung Myung then instructed the disciple to relay a message to his elder, urging him to approach the sect leader politely. Chung Myung seemed to be taking control of the conversation, leaving those around him unsure of how to respond. Saima acknowledged that he wasn't holding Chung Myung responsible for his rudeness, understanding that Chung Myung's behavior stemmed from his loyalty to his sect leader. He made a distinction between the nature of their rudeness, emphasizing that his own was a matter of heartfelt loyalty, whereas Chung Myung's rudeness was driven by power. According to Sima, being rude without power was simply rude, but when one possessed power, it somehow ceased to be considered as such. Chung Myung recognized Lee Song-bek among the Southern Edge sect disciples 
and was determined to maintain peace. However, he sensed that the newcomers intended to disrupt the peace from the very beginning. He attempted to persuade his senior brothers that if they were to lose to the Southern Edge sect, he would personally take it upon himself to eliminate all of them. He didn't care if they lost elsewhere or faced defeat at the hands of others, but he couldn't bear to see them lose to the Southern Edge sect. One of the senior disciples of the Mount Hua sect countered by saying that they lacked the confidence to face such a consequence. Chung Myung's threats didn't phase the senior members of the Southern Edge sect, as they perceived him as an impulsive child who didn't grasp the vastness of the world. They believed that they could deal with him later, once he had learned his lesson. The Southern Edge sect disciples argued that the Mount Hua sect's disciples were the ones who initiated the conflict. However, they firmly believed that power would ultimately determine the truth, and martial artists settled their disputes through combat. Regardless of eloquent speech, the outcome would be decided by the sword. They anticipated that the conference between the Southern Edge sect and the Mount Hua sect would be highly interesting this time. Sima was taken aback when he saw the sect leader of the Mount Hua sect appearing relaxed compared to the previous year. Nevertheless, he remained confident in their superiority and taunted the Mount Hua sect disciples by expressing his dislike for plum blossoms due to their fragrance that disrupted harmony. Haiyan interpreted this as a reference to the Mount Hua sect's previous pursuit of prophets and their refusal to cooperate harmoniously with the Southern Edge sect. Sima also disclosed that the elders of the Southern Edge sect were contemplating making this conference the last one. They deemed the sparring with the Mount Hua sect as meaningless and detrimental to their sect's development. Additionally, the relationship between the two sects had been shattered, akin to broken porcelain. Repairing it would require significant effort. The sect leader of the Mount Hua sect felt humiliated by these revelations, and Sima made it clear that they aimed to officially subjugate the Mount Hua sect under their authority. He further noted that the conference had always been hosted by the Mount Hua sect, and they had never raised any complaints about the arrangement. Sima continued to reveal the Southern Edge sect's intentions, explaining that their past support for the Mount Hua sect had been a mere facade. Their true purpose was to witness the extent of the Mount Hua sect's decline in person to showcase their victory over them. Sima urged the sect leader of the Mount Hua sect to officially cancel the conference. In response, the sect leader questioned whether the Southern Edge sect intended to sever all relations with other sects. His primary concern was for the safety of the younger disciples, as he anticipated the conference would be dangerous. Ungam argued that giving up the match due to fear would bring shame upon the disciples for the rest of their lives. Instead, they should place their faith in the hard work the disciples had put into their training. Meanwhile, Chung Myung was engaged in training with the disciples and offering them guidance. The Southern Edge sect disciples were treated to a lavish meal, and while they perceived the Mount Hua sect members as growing arrogant, they understood that martial prowess was the true measure of a sect's worth. They aspired to make the Southern Edge sect the best in the world. Jin issued a warning to the disciples, reminding them that they must demonstrate what true disciples of the Southern Edge sect were capable of. He threatened to teach them a lesson himself, if they failed to do so before the elders intervened. Saima entered the room and essentially reiterated Jin's sentiments, instructing them to achieve a victory so decisive that the Mount Hua sect members would not dare to mention their name. He also encouraged them not to hesitate in causing injury to their opponents. In the midst of these preparations, Jiu Lan Yun found themselves unable to sleep due to the anxiety of the upcoming events. They marveled at Chung Myung's seemingly unwavering nerves as he slept soundly. Chung Myung appeared and explained that his nerves weren't made of steel, but rather attributed their apparent weakness to the others. He reassured them, acknowledging their dedication and hard work. Chung Myung proceeded with his training and contemplated his surroundings. He expressed his determination that if Yu were to appear again, he would take drastic measures, tying her with a rope and throwing her off a cliff. As Chung Myung felt a different presence in the mountains at dawn, he approached silently to observe. To his surprise, he discovered two individuals deep in conversation. One of them was Baek Chun, and the other was Jin. The revelation that they were brothers came as a shock to him. Jin referred to Baek Chun by his real name, Dong Ryong, but Baek Chun protested, urging Jin not to discard the name their parents had given him. Jin, whose full name was Jin Dong Ryong, encouraged Baek Chun to embrace his given name, implying that he shouldn't have discarded it. Chung Myung was taken aback by this newfound knowledge of their identities and their fraternal relationship. He yearned to meet their father and inquire about the thought process behind naming one of them Money Bat. Baek Chun disclosed that he had run away from home and joined the Mount Hua sect with the sole purpose of defeating Jin. He believed that Jin's gentle demeanor and smile concealed a rotten heart. Jin, on the other hand, offered to accept Bak Chun into the Southern Edge sect if he were to beg on the floor. However, Bak Chun's goal was to aid the Mount Hua sect in surpassing the Southern Edge sect, 
and he dismissed Jin's suggestion. Chong Myung had overheard their entire conversation, gaining insight into their complex history and motivations. Bak Chun had realized after joining the Mount Hua sect that true happiness was not found in fine clothes, good food, or a luxurious life. Instead, he found purpose and affection within the Mount Hua sect. Jin, feeling humiliated by his own choices, resigned himself to a life as a third-rate warrior and watching Baek Chun rise to become the Southern Edge sect leader from a subordinate position. He declared that neither he nor the Mount Hua sect would ever be able to show their faces in the martial world again. In response, Baek Chun made a promise to himself that he would become the sect leader someday and restore the Mount Hua sect's former glory. At that moment, Chung Myung appeared before them, leaving Baek Chun shocked as he had not sensed his presence. Addressing him by his real name, Chung Myung expressed admiration for Baek Chun's positive thoughts about the Mount Hua sect and his decision to leave the Southern Edge sect. He declared that the time had come to crush the faces of their adversaries. The next morning, the sect leader offered advice to the students, urging them not to be overly tense. He emphasized that the Mount Hua and Southern Edge Conference should serve as a stepping stone for them, regardless of the outcomes. He watched over all the students, instilling in them a sense of pride as disciples of the Mount Hua sect. In the hall, all the students had gathered, but there were also outsiders seeking entry. These individuals were dressed luxuriously, and the sect leader recognized some of them as the top leaders of the Shangxi Merchant Association and other influential figures from the local area. He wondered why they were interested in attending the Mount Hua and Southern Edge Conference. However, he clarified that this wasn't a trick orchestrated by the Mount Hua sect, but rather the idea of Sir Huang, who believed the event would be more exciting with an audience. He recalled when Chung Myung had sent him a letter requesting the presence of famous and influential spectators. Ung Gum announced the beginning of the conference, and the first participants were Beck and Jin. The outcome of the entire event seemed to hinge on this match alone. The audience was impressed by Jin's appearance, and he exuded confidence, resembling a young hero from a story. However, Jin was shocked to observe that Beck was utilizing the crouching tiger style with his young sword. Beck attacked with incredible speed, launching consecutive strikes, leaving both spectators and participants amazed. The sect leader wondered when Beck had reached such a high level. Despite his repeated attacks, Beck couldn't even scratch Jin. It was as if he faced an insurmountable cliff that he dared not attempt to climb. Bok continued his relentless attacks, but Jin found the encounter amusing. He swiftly countered Beck's assault, knocking him to the ground. Jin declared that no matter how many martial arts techniques Beck learned from the Mount Hua sect, he wouldn't be able to touch even a single hair on Jin's head. With another attack, Jin shattered Beck's sword leaving him unable to cut even the hem of Jin's clothes. He boldly proclaimed that the martial arts of the Mount Hua sect could never compare to the martial art of the Southern Edge sect, not in 100 or 1,000 years. In his view, the superiority of the Southern Edge sect was unwavering. Following Beck's unconsciousness, other disciples rushed to his aid. They urged Jin not to hurt his opponent so severely during a spar. They then took Beck to the treatment hall for medical attention. Next in line was Siohan from the Southern Edge sect. The audience marveled at Jin Jumryong's impressive performance, surpassing their expectations. They deemed him worthy of the title of the most talented swordsman and believed that the Southern Edge sect deserved to be called the best sect in Shangxi for having a disciple like him. Meanwhile, Sir Huang wondered why Chung Myung had requested the presence of spectators. He sensed that Chung had something up his sleeve, and he feared that the Mount Hua sect might not be able to restore its former reputation at this rate. Chung Myung confided in the sect leader, revealing that he never expected them to win the conference outright. He simply aimed to salvage some of their pride. He anticipated that all the second-class disciples would lose, leaving only one person with a chance of victory. The situation grew dire, with consecutive losses piling up. Hyung suggested that the sect leaders put an end to the proceedings before even the third-class disciples faced brutal defeat. As the third-class disciples' match approached, Chung Myung leaped onto the ground, urging the disciples to join him. Jin instructed his junior to assist Chung Myung in understanding his place, while he confronted another. Chung Myung swiftly jumped and delivered a punch to Sion Wu's face, moving so fast that Sami, the Southern Edge sect's elder, couldn't react in time. Sami ordered Sio to rise, noting that he hadn't even used his internal energy. Other disciples of the Southern Edge sect cheered from their positions, and Chung Myung vowed to beat Sio until he conceded. Chung Myung, despite his initial apologetic feelings, became consumed by the thrill of the fight. He beckoned Sio closer, eager to demonstrate what it felt like to be utterly unable to reach one's opponent. Jin called out to his comrade from behind, 
his voice laced with concern, urging him not to underestimate his adversary. His words of caution were met with a dismissive response, as Seo confidently declared that Chung's sword would prove utterly ineffective against him. Without hesitation, he lunged forward, determined to strike down his opponent. However, his bold assault was swiftly countered by the masterful skills of Chung, sending him crashing to the ground. The shockwave of the unexpected outcome rippled through the gathered spectators. Even Yun Zhong, who had witnessed the entire exchange, found himself taken aback by the turn of events. It was hard to believe that Chung Myung, a relative newcomer to the Southern Edge sect, had just bested one of their esteemed third-class disciples. The sect's leader, Hyun Jong, was equally astounded. This turn of events defied all logic, leaving him perplexed. He wondered if there was an underlying plot, suspecting that perhaps another member of their sect had interfered to secure victory for Chung. Seeking clarity, one of the men had been observing the situation closely. He inquired about the duration of Chung's tenure in the Mount Hua sect. Ungum, with a hint of astonishment in his voice, revealed that it had been less than six months since Chung's arrival. The sect leader was initially under the impression that Chung Myung was merely a fortuitous addition to their ranks, a stroke of luck for the sect. However, it had become evident that the young man possessed extraordinary martial prowess that far exceeded what he had displayed in this single duel. Hyun Jong began to consider the possibility that they had unearthed a martial arts prodigy, a figure who could potentially lead the Mount Hua sect for generations to come, rejuvenating its legacy. Among the onlookers, murmurs of bewilderment and awe echoed through the crowd. They found themselves pondering the enigma of how the Mount Hua sect had stumbled upon such an exceptionally talented individual. Huang, a spectator, reflected on his own circumstances, realizing that his previous unconsciousness had prevented him from witnessing Chung's full martial prowess. Nevertheless, he had anticipated this outcome and had called for more witnesses to observe the spectacle. However, as the situation stood, the Mount Hua sect had only secured one victory. The outcome of the overall competition remained uncertain. They were all aware that for the Mount Hua sect to truly establish its dominance, the other third-class disciples needed to secure victories as well. The fate of the sect's counterattack hung in the balance, waiting for the next developments. Chung Myung, on the other hand, was basking in the exhilaration of his triumph. His confidence radiated as he soaked in the admiration of his fellow disciples. Meanwhile, the other disciples couldn't help but wonder how Chung Myung could maintain such composure after brutally defeating an opponent. Their doubts, however, were overshadowed by the anticipation of the upcoming matches. As the spotlight shifted to the next competitor, Yoon Jong, he understood the expectations resting on his shoulders. Chung Myung had set the standard, and Yoon Jong knew he had to uphold the current momentum. Chung Myung encouraged Yoon Jong to seize the moment and strike his opponent the instant he locked eyes with them. With determination in his stride, Yoon Jong entered the arena, greeted by the hopeful gazes of the audience. Just as he prepared to face his opponent, Gong Jin, the tension in the air intensified. With a chilling warning, Chung Myung called out to Yoon Jong from behind, emphasizing the gravity of the situation. Failure was not an option. A subtle shift in the wind's direction hinted at a change of fortune for the Mount Hua sect. Yun Zhong, resolute and determined, identified himself as the third-class disciple of the esteemed Mount Hua sect and boldly challenged the Southern Edge sect to a duel. Jin, the Southern Edge sect's leader, wasted no time in issuing orders for Yun Zhong's destruction. His previous assessment of Chung Myung's strength had left him wary, but he remained confident that the upcoming challenges would not be as daunting. Yoon Jong, on the other hand, reminisced about the last time he had faced Jin, realizing that he had suffered a humiliating defeat. Today's outcome might have been similarly bleak if not for the arrival of Chung Myung. As their duel commenced, Yoon Jong adopted a poised stance, his attack swift and efficient, following a predictable yet effective sword path. His speed and precision left Gong Jin, his opponent struggling to keep up, and frustration gnawed at him. In his exasperation, Gong Jin berated Yoon Jong, cautioning him against arrogance merely because he had managed to deflect a few attacks. Determined to prove himself, Gong Jin launched a relentless counterattack, yet Yoon Jong knew that he could not afford even a trace of hesitation. He channeled all his power into a single decisive strike, shattering Gong Jin's sword into fragments and sending him crashing to the ground. The victory brought elation among the disciples of the Mount Hua sect, their jubilant shouts echoed through the arena, drowning out all other sounds. Overwhelmed by joy, the sect leader lost consciousness briefly, further underscoring the magnitude of their triumph. Chung Myung, taking the opportunity to impart wisdom to Yun Jong, likened martial arts to constructing a tower. The height it could reach depended on the strength of its foundation. He observed that the disciples of the Southern Edge sect had focused on building the second and third levels of their tower, 
Before establishing a strong foundation, their delay in reinforcing their basics had left them vulnerable. With newfound determination, Jiol approached his duel, his movements marked by a notable shift in strategy. He concentrated on channeling all his strength into each attack, resulting in a resounding victory over his opponent. The Mount Hua sect's win streak reached an impressive four consecutive victories. Yun Zhong assessed the situation, realizing that apart from himself, Jiel, and Chong Myung, the other seven disciples of the Mount Hua sect, were evenly matched in skill. This consistency meant that their winning streak would likely continue, ensuring victory over the Southern Edge sect. As the third-class disciples emerged victorious in all ten consecutive matches, it marked a remarkable turnaround from their previous 10 consecutive losses. However, the astounding symmetry of 10 wins and 10 losses resulted in a draw, making this competition even more memorable. Chung Myung, driven by a deep desire to repay the debt owed for the stolen Plum Blossom Sword techniques, was far from finished with his mission. He harbored a strong intention to bid farewell to their adversaries in a gracious manner. Turning to Yun Zhong, he emphasized the importance of not missing a single moment of what he was about to do. All eyes were fixed upon Chung Myung, captivated by the gravity of his words. It was evident that he was poised to become the figurehead of the Mount Hua sect, a realization that left many awestruck. The sect leader of Mount Hua could hardly believe that this day had finally come. He had never expected to witness this moment in his lifetime. As anticipation swirled around Chung Myung, the sect leader couldn't help but wonder about his disciples' intentions while Sima, the Southern Edge sect's leader berated his own disciples for the ignominious defeats that had marred their reputation. Jin, on the other hand, found himself contemplating the draw between the Mount Hua and Southern Edge sects. The Southern Edge sect's once perfect victory had now been tarnished by the unexpected outcome. Meanwhile, Chung Myung had successfully drawn everyone's attention towards him, preparing to address the crowd. He requested Huang to decide the winner given that he had witnessed all the matches firsthand. Huang acknowledged the difficulty in making a conclusive decision and expressed the sentiment that leaving it as a draw would be unsatisfactory. Chung Myung proposed an alternative solution to determine the victor. With both sects having secured 10 victories, he suggested eliminating the participants who had lost and arranging matches between the winners. The idea was to have a team match, where the winner of each sparring round would remain on the field to face the next opponent. The side with the last person standing would be declared the winner. The proposal left everyone astonished. Sima, perturbed by Chung Myung's audacity, questioned his authority to represent the Mount Hua sect and make such suggestions. Chung Myung calmly advised Sima to seek clarification from his own sect leader, who was also present. The audience seemed to favor Chung Myung's suggestion, eager to witness the third-class disciples pitted against the second-class disciples of the Southern Edge sect. Ungum, recognizing Chung Myung's unique perspective and strategy, urged the sect leader to trust his judgment. Finally, the sect leader of Mount Hua announced that they had accepted Chung Myung's suggestion, and Sima reluctantly agreed as well. In the midst of this, Yun Zhong couldn't contain his skepticism and pulled Chung Myung aside, questioning how they could possibly defeat the second-class disciples especially with formidable talents like Jin Jum Ryong among their ranks. Chung Myung, oozing confidence, dismissed any dreams of victory from the Southern Edge sect, asserting that they would be utterly crushed the moment Jin stepped onto the battlefield. Regardless of their skill level or preparation, Jin Jum Ryong was on a completely different plane of expertise. Sima attempted to strategize, suggesting the use of nine fighters against Jin to deplete his strength leaving Chung Myung with a certain path to victory. In response, Jin maintained that their sole objective was to win, and it made no difference to him whether he faced 10 or 20 opponents. Sima, undeterred, ordered Yu Baik to step forward as the first challenger. In contrast, Chung Myung eschewed any need for elaborate plans, asserting that he was the plan itself. He believed that the Mount Hua sect needed to prove their strength unequivocally. Chung Myung sought to create a legend that would reverberate throughout the martial world, one where a third-class disciple single-handedly crushed all of the Southern Edge sect's second-class disciples. Get ready for the comment of the day. Yu Bak initiated the duel, employing the Plum Blossom Sword technique. The Southern Edge sect leader was left baffled, wondering when his sect had acquired such an advanced sword technique. Chung Myung, however, countered Yu Bak's technique effortlessly, leaving no room for the 12-movement Snowflower Sword technique. With a swift attack, Chung Myung sent Yu Bak tumbling to the ground. Chung Myung called for the next disciple to face him, leaving Sima in shock. He couldn't fathom how Chung Myung, relying solely on basic sword techniques, had defeated Yu Bek. Sima realized that if Chung Myung continued to progress at this rate, he could potentially overshadow the entire Southern Edge sect. Determined to stall Chung Myung's momentum, Sima instructed Seo Han to be the next challenger, 
and advised him not to let Chung Myung secure an easy victory. The fight between Chung Myung and Seo Han began, but the outcome mirrored the previous duel. Seo Han, like Yu Baek and many others before him, succumbed to Chung Myung's skill. With a single move, Chung Myung defeated the second-class disciple, Jong Seo Han. Chung Myung was not content with mere victories. He aimed to leave an indelible mark on the Southern Edge sect, a stigma that would persist as long as his sect existed. He eagerly called for the next challenger, unleashing his falling pedal sword technique, moving with such incredible speed that his opponent could barely track his movements. Once again, in a display of unparalleled skill and finesse, Chung Myung effortlessly dispatched his opponent with a single breathtaking move. Yun Zhong, who had been attentively observing the match, couldn't tear his eyes away from the masterful sword techniques of the Mount Hua sect that Chung Myung was employing. Intrigued and impressed, the onlookers beseeched Chung Myung to share more of his extraordinary swordsmanship. With six adversaries already vanquished, the crowd began to wonder if every member of their Southern Edge sect would fall to the might of this formidable third-class disciple. Fear began to grip the hearts of the remaining students, and they hesitated to challenge Chung Myung. Desperate for a solution, they turned to senior brother Jin and implored him to face the indomitable swordsman. Jin, with determination etched on his face, agreed to confront Chung Myung. As he started to make his way towards the dueling ground, Sima, the sect leader, intervened. He ordered Jin to halt and directed Manjok to approach Chung Myung instead. Sima questioned Jin about his confidence in facing Chung Myung, to which Jin replied with a hint of trepidation that the young prodigy was nothing short of a monster. Sima contemplated the situation, acknowledging Chung Myung's potential to become a true menace if left unchecked. He believed that he posed a threat to the Southern Edge sect's future, and concluded that eliminating him was the only option. Sima urged Jin to confront Chung Myung, reassuring him that even though Chung was a monstrous opponent, he still possessed the skills to defeat him. In case outright victory proved elusive, he suggested severing his arm or taking some other decisive action. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps.